Hello, transport nerds, and welcome back to Talking Planning. For the first time in almost a year, I'm launching another ferry review. As you probably know by now, I haven't lived by the coast for quite a while, and as such, catching ferries is now quite a treat. So, combining ferry rides from the past couple of trips to Sydney, I wanted to check out another one of Sydney's ferry types, the First Fleet Class. Supply, the first of the First Fleet class ferries, was completed in 1984 and all were built at Carrington Slipway's Tomago, which is in my brief Newcastle slash Port Stephens stomping ground. These ferries were a necessary purchase, replacing the last of the K class and wooden Lady class ferries constructed as early as 1913 and after racking up 70 odd years of service were due for retirement. And that's where the first fleet class came in, ready to start duties. This review came from a couple of journeys, one on a F2 Taronga Zoo ferry and the other on an F4 from Piermont Circular Quay. While waiting to depart, this intriguing looking little electric ferry makes its way past Barangaroo, presumably on an F10 to Blackwattle Bay. Looking around the interior, the first fleet class ferries have recently been refurbished with new seats and fresh flooring, giving them a clean and tidy look, ready to take on the harbour for many years to come. With the earliest First Fleet class rapidly approaching 40, an interior refresh was a good move with new high back seats replacing the somewhat garish looking red vinyl seats. And I reckon they do a pretty good job of making these vessels feel a little more contemporary. One of the main reasons to jump on board a Sydney ferry is to enjoy the view. As for many ferry trips, there are faster alternatives, but none have quite the same level of enjoyment and excitement that a ferry ride can offer. So to that end, the glass area is quite large, there are outside decks on both levels, and this affords a good view out. And as we travel round the harbour, sit back, relax and enjoy the view.
In 2006 and 2007, these ferries were repowered with MTU Series 60 engines for improved efficiency and reliability. And for an older ferry, this means that they managed to be fairly quiet and refined. So let's have a quick listen now. One thing I love about traveling on Sydney's ferry network is seeing the variety of vessels and unique roles they are all designed to perform. From the small ferries that hop between small commuter stops, to the river class ferries and river cats, to the private services, and of course through to larger vessels like the first fleet class, emerald class, and of course the big boys, the freshwater class ferries. Each plays a unique role in services in and around and across the various bays and harbours of Sydney. Over the years, I have travelled on quite a few different types of Sydney's ferries, and whilst it's no secret that I enjoy spending time on the water, there is something special about some of the older ferry types. From a nostalgia perspective, I think for many, the freshwater class will continue to be top dog. But the First Fleet class has played a broad and important role in keeping Sydney moving, and as far as I'm aware, will continue to for quite some time, thanks to newer engines and a fresher interior that helps bring these vessels into the 21st century. Still, as with any good ferry ride, all journeys eventually come to an end and navigating the harbour maze past the Opera House, other First Fleet ferries, and of course the fresh waters, it's time to say thanks for joining me and I will see you again soon.